Hi everyone, this is Rogan Keller with the Hitachi Developer Network. Today I wanted to present you with a quick example that I've built out for an HCI connector plugin. Um, all that this connector is going to do is crawl through um, a URL that you provide as part of the configuration with some regular expressions for including and excluding, as well as a configuration that you're going to specify around what depth it should for that crawling. Um, this is a rough cut video, so I'm not doing any post editing other than to wrap this up as a video file and post it out to you. I'm going to be using a couple of technologies here, including the Eclipse development platform, Maven, uh, and obviously GitHub, where I'm pulling this all from. And I will say that it's not, the intention of this video is not to be a best practices video, maybe not even a common practices video. It's merely to demonstrate to you an, a working example of something that's been built and uh, take it one step further than the out-of-box examples that they have in the form of uh, actually using, we're going to run through the test harness, but we're also going to deploy it to the HCI system, but also showing us pulling it down from GitHub using the Maven tool, using the Eclipse development ID. So take it for what it's worth, but uh, certainly don't take it as the gospel when it comes to... Um, when it comes to best practices around these things. With that said, let's get things started. So I'm using Eclipse Neon. This is the second release. I think it's 4.6.2. And I am on Java 1.8 um, in terms of the, the version of Java that I'm using, just to, there we go, 1.8. So we'll need this window as well. So I do have a uh, works trace cre created for this, um, and uh, but it doesn't have any projects in it. I'm going to go ahead and import projects from GitHub. Clone a URI. And it's asking me for what that URI is, right? So I'm going to go over here into my GitHub repository. You'll find this link in the code snippets up on the HCI uh, community. I'm going to copy that out. Oops, I don't need that bar. Let's go down here. It's going to populate some of those other fields for me. I do have my username and password already saved here. So I don't need to put that in. I'm going to tell it to take the master branch. At this point for the examples, I don't have any other branches created. going to go ahead and download those objects. This will take a little bit of time here, but I'm going to import an existing Eclipse project versus creating a new project for the wizard. Since this was built on Eclipse, um, th that's something we can do. We click next. And that is the project that we want, the HCI connector example. So we'll finish that up. As you can see from that little M, this is a Maven project. It was a Java project. Go ahead and do a little compiling there. All right, so we're looking good. First thing that we're going to do is, uh, as you can see, our target folder is empty. Um, I do have the source code from the example. The, the example connector plugin here is the one that was provided by the HCI team. Um, and I just provide that in there as a reference, although we're not using it in this example and it's not wired up from a, a configuration standpoint to do it. And then we've got the HCI crawler connector. I'm going to do a separate video where I kind of walk through what the functionality on this is. I've tried to uh, put some comments in here to explain a little bit around that. I have created some of the, the necessary um, files, uh, the plugin JSON, the assembly XML, etc., to be associated with this. And we do have the library for the testing harness also included here. And then I have a configuration file um, here as well. I'll open that with the text editor. Um, 
this is something that I, I included to give you some clue as to a possible configuration. But in reality, this again is not a best practice, right? Um, I should take what I'm building here for my connector and I should generate out my configuration and then I should start and then I should enter in these values, right? Uh, as I've already pre-populated here. But for this again, example again here, I'm, I'm just kind of giving that to you to, um, to be able to run this quickly. And as we can see here, the target uh, I have is not populated uh, just yet. I'm gonna take a look at the POM file. And under in our pom.xml, I have a I have a target of package. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that, and that's going to generate out. Um, it's going to generate out our our package jars with both uh, dependencies attached and unattached to it. And I believe in the case of HCI and deployment, there it actually does want to see our our dependencies deployed with it. So I always have, this might be just an error in my own build environment, but the first time I try and build it, I always get that failure. And I have to, I have to tell it something that it already knows, that it's using Java 1.8 for the compiler, uh, for the compiler. Let's try that again. And voila, everything's rosy. Refresh that. Now we see I've got a compiled jar file. And we're looking at the one with dependencies. All right, so now let's let's start using that plugin connector. And I'm gonna use the long the longhand format in all this rather than being in the relative directory. So I've downloaded the, the testing harness. I'm going to start with that. So, like a plugin, plugin test. It's my executable. I'm going to feed it the jar file. Right, and I mentioned before that I, I've given you a configuration here, but usually what you do is use your dash a option and generate this out. Um, in my case, I found that uh, aside from the dash a option, I, I had to give it the default configuration that again comes with this packaging. Um, generate that out and then use the C option to go and find your configuration. So we're just, we're skipping past that part. Right? I'm working on a Mac and for others who are working on a Mac, for error message purposes, you do need to make a update to your plugin test um, execution file. Ben pointed this out to me in our HCI community, a great location to get more information about building your plugins and uh, getting some answers to the uh, maybe any issues that you're having. Specifically what he's calling out here. It's our plugin test file and down here on this base directory. So change that up and you won't get that error message anymore on your Mac. So to again, to review through that, I have the location of my plugin test um, harness. I have specified my jar file, the one with dependencies, and it's spe specified my configuration file, which again, is this little, little one here, which has given me a couple of parameters which I need, right? The first value being the URL that I'm gonna crawl a regular expression for those that I should include, a regular expression for those that I should exclude, 
And since we're following link, uh, links down, uh, we're pulling those out and then following them, I'm telling it how many directories to follow down, right? Because if I didn't do that, we, we could probably get in some recursive situations there. Oh, last thing I should do is specify some, some endpoints, right? So I know it's going to stop here at my metafile example, or at least it should. And just to confirm here, I ran into this last time where I did not have the proper plugin name and path. I see that that is correct this time. I'm going to run it without the D tag first. And as we can see here, I'm getting some good output, which is these are my, my links that I want. I got success there. But now I'm going to go through and I want to debug it with a D. In Eclipse, so we're going to go run debug configurations, right? And I created this remote Java. Um, application, a URL connector. I've specified that I am on port 5903, matches up with what we got here. And I'm going to hit debug. It's going to flip me over to the other perspective. And now I can actually walk through that code the way I want to, right? So this one's stopping every time I'm looking for that metadata. So my connector looks good, right? Um, we're successful there. At this point, I've tested it exhaustively, and so I, I, I feel we're next. We're ready for that next step, which is to go off to um, to our HCI system. So in this instance, I'm going to use we use our lab system, labs.hds.com, which is a nice little tool. And I'm going to jump into our content sandbox, which includes HCI and a fast start. Installation lab I could also use, but then I'd actually have to install HCI as well. Super easy to do, but not for the purposes of this video. Then I'm going to upload the latest one that I've created. This is just to share it with the lab. Okay. Look at my lab diagram. I want one of the HCI instances. And I can find that at 192.168.150.60. Oh, yes. Okay, I've already worked up over here. So HCI, I want my admin interface, which is port. 8,000. It's already populating my username and my password. I'm going to download my new connector. Go back to my administration. I'm going to upload a plugin bundle. I'm going to want my example with the jar files. Great, that's 
done. If I look at my plugin bundles, uh, I called this the example data create uh, connector. And uh, you can tell this is mine because it has a little trash bin next to it. All the others are out of the box. So, And if I go under connectors, I'll be able to find my URL crawler uh, connection, connection that I had. So if I want to get rid of this later on, and obviously one of the nice things about having the lab here and it just expiring and wiping everything out is I don't have to do any cleanup. But if I wanted to get rid of it, I'd have to, I could take it out of the workflows and the connectors that it's in, and then I'd be able to, um, I'd be able to uh, delete this bundle. I could create just a data connection here, but I'm going to go and create a workflow so we can dig a little deeper. I'm going to call this URL crawler. crawler um, connector give it the same name and here again I've, I've got to enter in the values for my configuration this is pulling from what I said is the default defaults in my code right so if I go to my my URL crawler example and I'm looking at this code up here you'll notice the same statements being made. So I'm going to grab those out of my configuration file. And again, this isn't, you know, if I was redoing this, I would probably, I'd probably make these the default values since we do have an example here, but I, I haven't done that. So URL path. Got the regular expression for URLs that I should include in my crawl. Evaluate positively. I've got the ones, the regular expression for ones I want to exclude. In this case, a caret is just something that wouldn't turn up, but I couldn't leave it blank. And then I want to have a depth of two. If I don't set a depth, I'm going to get some recursion there. I, I do have in the code, and again, this is a separate walkthrough, but in the code, there's um, it, it builds a list of the URLs that it's crawling. So you're not you don't have any, it, it kind of recurred or getting itself stuck in an infinite loop here, but uh, just so it's not going too far and reevaluating the same stuff, I'm going to set it for two. Test that connection that is successful, and I'm going to go ahead and create it. Next, I'm going to give it a pipeline, and I'm just going to set up the default pipeline for this just so we can see something coming out of it and I don't have any output for it I'll click next go ahead and create that now that I have it let's go ahead and test it out so what you're seeing down here this is this is that default pipeline we don't have any discovered fields but I want to select the document the test is against right going to browse this gives me uh, this is already looking good right because that's my that's my root directory here for the the segi files and then these are all of the URLs that it picked up as it did that crawl I'm not concerned with most of them in fact at the end of the day all I want is the tra files and yes I can uh, you know it, it could specify that in the regular expression scenario down but I didn't I'm going to select one of those and begin my test now and under my discovered fields there we go and this is this is really what I'm looking for right here this value um, in my metadata for the HCI URI and that's it that's that's what this example does um, you know you can take that code download it manipulate it um, and, and maybe build this into something that is useful for you but uh, if you do Please share it out. Please post it up in the community. And we'd be glad to have uh, and host the, the new connector or, um, or stage that you've created. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.